now it's time to look at the principles of DevOps, which will also lead us to the practices. And a lot of those practices would also involve the automation. So we'll start talking about all of that. And that's where we come up with our own DevOps strategies and start implementing those. Now talking about principles, there are three key principles that we talk about when it comes to DevOps. One is systems thinking. Second is amplifying feedback loops. Third is continuous improvement. Uh, I'm mainly going to focus about the systems thinking and the amplifying feedback loops here. Now talking about systems thinking, it's nothing but applying the same principles that we learned uh, with the Toyota production system as well as the assembly line and uh, that's our legacy manufacturing system improvements. And what we do with systems thinking and just look at the big picture, come up with our value stream, come up with our complete process and start optimizing it by reducing the waste in the system. So we identify the waste. Now, in case of manufacturing, it was the waste in manufacturing, waiting, a lot of that. Um, some things apply to the IT process. Some things are unique in the in the in IT process as well, right? And then we come apply also the theory of constraints um, that uh, the Ellie Goldratt uh, taught us in his book, The Goal. And our goal is to continuously improving the flow. Flow is your process the throughput of your systems right from you know the you know in case of manufacturing it was right from the raw material till you have a shipped product uh, product in case of it it's basically you start from the idea that's that's the first thing that you start with then you start developing then you come up with uh, planning your work then you start coding and developing here uh, then it goes to your you know generally a pre-production or a staging kind of an environment and finally it goes to the production goes out to the production so you come up with uh, the value stream for this process identify the bottleneck one example of a bottleneck is your developers are waiting for the systems and the dev environments to be provisioned or you're able to build your product but you can't release it unless you do the quality check so your qa process is manual or maybe your deployment is manual so those are your uh, bottlenecks and that's what you look at and first thing that you do uh, if you're a technology leader generally that's where you that's your responsibility to come up with a value stream and you come up with the process right from design to development uh, to deployment uh, understand how long it takes for each of that process time what is the lead time so you come up with the lead time you uh, come up with the actual processing time and you identify the bottlenecks you know define or identify the waste in the system now in case of IT man, IT process, software delivery, the waste can be a, a waste of overproduction can be running test where you don't really need to or waiting can be dev and QA waiting for the environment. Overprocessing can be, you know, you're engaging workforce in um, a lot of planning and doing some manual releases and, uh, you know, just uh, too much of workforce doing that processing there. Uh, defects are pretty simple. That's the bugs and rework that we do, firefighting that you have to do as part of operations um, or inventory could be piling up the work in progress work in progress is just piled up there so you don't you, you know nobody's addressing that your throughput is less so uh, that's a waste of inventory waste of resources waste of movement so you identify the waste in your IT process and you start optimizing it um, one of the things to start managing your work is and using a pull model is using Kanban Kanban is a pull model where you you know every instead of you pushing the work uh, it's the resources who are available and based on their availability they start pulling the work and that's um, that's how you know this uh, kanban process typically works right and that also gives you a visual idea of your work in progress uh, that's very important so work in progress leads to piling up of inventory you don't want to pile up the inventory and kanban also puts a control on that work in progress there uh, that's about visualizing work and then you also start applying the theory of constraint where you identify the bottleneck a lot of times the bottlenecks are just environment creation which is a manual process you have to just wait for uh, sometimes in days sometimes weeks just for the environment to be ready so that developers can try things out there uh, deployments manual deployments shouldn't be there deployments just should be automated way so if you are using ma manual deployments that could also be bottlenecks again running a test setup or creating the test environment and running those tests also can sometimes be back bottleneck. Sometimes your manual testing is also a bottleneck, right?
in some cases overly tight architecture monolithic applications turn out to be bottlenecks because your build just takes forever so you need to start creating that value stream identify how long it takes for every step to be processed uh, that's what will give you an idea about your bottlenecks then you apply theory of constraints to it elevate those constraints and smoothen your workflow so that you achieve higher efficiency and what you generally focus on is shifting the bottlenecks to the left left of your workflow so that it moves from if you have a pre-production or environment process or production related uh, bottlenecks you shift it towards the left on the left hand side is the programming programming is like application uh, it's it's similar to manufacturing again you have um, you know product design and then you have uh, product manufacturing uh, product manufacturing is generally can be automated with assembly lines and optimizing the process where design is a creative process design takes time similarly you are building a product writing the code might be a is a creative process it might take time uh, you can have the bottlenecks there but once the features are ready it all of that all of the rest of the process should just be automated even while creating the process uh, you know features if there is anything that is required from operations uh, let's say environment creation or testing it should just be automated and that's what shifting bottlenecks to the left really means in the next video we're going to talk about how do we reduce a lot of waste or reduce i mean mainly the uh, you know time spent in waiting um, and how do we automate some of the processes what we're going to start looking at mm -hmm.